Even though we haven't seen Foxconn on the market for quite some time now due to them doing sort of OEM work, we can see that the styling on the box follows exactly the same design that they used to use on some of their older motherboards like the uh, A7DAS which we've already looked at before. We can see that it's made by Foxconn, it's EUP ready and it's the H67AS which is part of the H67 chipset boards using the new Sandy Bridge socket. We can see that it's compatible with Windows 7 and it has got a sticker for Norton as well which leads us to believe that it has got some sort of Norton utilities uh, bundled with it. We can see down here that there is a barcode sticker telling us a lot of information that is uh, H67 LGA1155 has a DVI-D uh, connector on it, PCI Express 2.0, DDR3 2200 OC, 1600, 1333 and 1066. It also has USB 3.0, 6 channel audio, gigabit LAN and various different SATA connections as well. On the back of the box is where we typically find all of the technical specifications and features and this is no different. We can see that it gives us some information on the dedicated onboard chipset which controls and monitors system performance, increased performance when you need to, reduce noise and energy consumption when you don't. So this has got a lot of features being a Sandy Bridge board where you can do overclocking and that sort of thing on the fly. It also tells you about the Fox Central Control Unit, complete protection for your CPU and system, automatically cuts off power if the CPU temperature rises too high, uh, also other things, automatic fan speed adjustment, uh, exclusive power channels for graphics cards, easily assigned different storage devices for quick hotkey startup, boot selection, loads of different features which uh, if you go onto the Foxconn website very shortly once this board has been launched you will be able to find out a lot more information on them features and also when we do a full review on this motherboard. Now let's open up the box and we can see exactly what comes included inside. So opening it up, you can see straight away on the top in an anti-static bag is the motherboard itself. Taking it out and we'll have a little look in a little bit. We've got this cardboard protection and underneath we've got the I.O. panel which is honestly quite bland. I thought it'd be a little bit more exciting than that but it's just a grey colour. You get the Foxconn drivers and utilities with Norton internet security on there. Get a user's manual with plenty of pictures all in black and white and it's all in English and it does delve quite into uh, the sort of BIOS and the software features. You also get a serial ATA data cable and another one and also a motherboard quick installation guide for the H67A series. Opening that up is some more details on the features. A nice diagram layer of the motherboard talking through exactly where the fan headers are, USB headers, sort of you know the memory specifications and so forth. And then you get an install guide on the other side, installed in the uh, CPU, and you get that in sort of many different languages as well. It tells you about installing memory, expansion cards, front panel connectors, and so forth. Firstly, taking a look at the sort of overall design and style of the board, we can see that it has followed the same sort of colour scheme once again that we have seen on Foxconn boards in the past. It's got this sort of black and yellow colour scheme, and straight away the first thing that you'll notice about the whole sort of theme of the of the board is that it is quite low profile. There's no massive sort of coolers going over the phase change or where the north bridge would be or anything like that. Um, obviously this is a slightly different board compared to older generation boards that we've seen because of the way that uh, we know the CPU is going to be quite intensive uh, with tasks these days that everything has gone sort of quite low profile. The H67 board is going to be aimed at sort of the lower end uh, of the market, people who want the best possible value for money, whereas the P67 boards are going to give a lot more. Um, and we will be looking at some P67 boards in the near future as well. You can see straight away, uh, sort of looking at this, that there is quite a lot of room around the socket and the socket is uh, socket 1155 which is going to be taking the new Sandy Bridge processors and straight away you can see that if you have got quite a big cooler that you need a lot of clearance for you're not really going to have a problem because there is so much room around uh, where the actual processor would go. When you compare this board to some sort of older boards that we've seen on the market, you know, 1156 boards and 1366, and even some of the P67 boards that are, are now coming out, uh, sort of coinciding with this, you will notice that, um, as we've already spoke about, the low-profile design, and that's really down to uh, the cooling that 
generally isn't needed. Uh, you'd normally expect some sort of cooling going over the, the PWM sort of phase and also over the north bridge, but there's no need for that on a board like this due to the low power output. You can see though that it has got this quite low profile cooler, uh, passive cooling over the south bridge with the uh, red Foxconn logo on there as well, so that's quite a nice little sort of styling touch. Obviously, this can be changed for an active cooling solution, uh, but sort of you, you shouldn't really need it. Even if you're you're going to be looking at uh, overclocking or anything like that, this should be more more than sufficient uh, to what you need. Now, take a look at the memory support on this board. Straight away, you can see that it has four ports because it accepts up to four 240 pin DDR3 DIMM modules. So, straight away, this board is going to accept DDR3. It supports up to 16 gigabyte of DDR3 in dual channel, hence the two black slots and two yellow slots. The speeds that it supports is 1066 megahertz, 1333, 1600, and 2200 in overclock mode. These new sets of H67 boards are the future and because of that we are looking at uh, more and more legacy uh, support being taken off of boards like this. There are um, some other boards from Foxconn including the P67 which has actually got an IDE connector on it but this particular board has purely got serial ATA connectors and you can see that they differentiate between different colours. So the three black ones are for serial ATA2 which runs at 300 megabit per second data transfer rate and we can also see the two yellow ones which of course are SATA3 connectors which run at 600 megabits per second on a data transfer rate. This board also has got an eSATA port which we will look into as well but it also has uh, support for RAID as well and the RAID functions that you can use on these serial ATA ports are RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10. Now with more and more peripherals on the market using uh, faster interfaces such as uh, USB 3.0 you still expect uh, a lot of products coming out to be using that as opposed to sort of older generation legacy ports, uh, PS2, that kind of thing. And because of that more and more boards are gaining USB ports. Now this particular board has quite a few. In total it actually has 14 USB 2.0 ports, 6 on the rear panel which we will look at and 4 on board USB ports supporting 8 extra ports. So straight away you can see the colour coded bright yellow USB ports. So these 4 ports will enable you to have up to 8 devices. So if you have got a case with plenty of USB ports on it just connect them straight into here and off you go. And just like on every motherboard these days, uh, you'd expect the, the usual front panel connectors. We can see that we have the front panel audio connector here, and also the CD in connector here. And as expected with any motherboard, you do uh, sort of expect the usual fan connectors. So we can see that we have a system fan connector here, 4 pin for PWM. Another 4 pin PWM fan connector here near the serial ATA ports. And the usual 4 pin PWM CPU fan header here. There are also some other connectors on here that are worth knowing about and the first one is this little header here for intrusion so if your case does support an intrusion alarm you can plug that straight onto there which is something that we don't generally see these days so it's quite nice to, to see that on there because we use a HTPC case here with an intruder alarm so it's something that we can actually finally try out. You can also see this blue header here for a COM port for people who still use uh, legacy COM ports and you can see that we have these uh, colour coded headers here for front panel connectors. This includes reset button, power button, reset LED, hard drive activity LED and so forth. A couple of other things on this board down uh, located by all the front panel connectors. First off you'll see the AMI BIOS chip here and you also see quite near to it is the clear CMOS jumper. Sadly this board hasn't got any features for sort of uh, the hardcore overclockers with regards to power and reset buttons on the board or a debug LED but you will notice that more and more boards these days are getting rid of debug LEDs so it's not really that common to see them but it would have been nice possibly to have the power and reset buttons on here but this board is a H67 board and it is aimed at the lower end market compared to the P67 board which we know has got these functions. Now one thing that's really going to appeal to people watching this video and that is all about the various different expansion cards that you can fit into these slots and graphics cards and so forth. Now straight away you can see that there is only one uh, PCI Express 16x lane which is for Nvidia AMD graphics cards and so forth. We can also see that there are two PCI Express one time slots for some of the new cards coming out, TV cards, sound cards that use that um, and also HIS have actually brought out some graphics cards to use the PCI Express one time slot. And you can also see that there are three legacy PCI slots, which I think personally are a little bit wasted. These days, uh, a lot of people barely even use one slot, so three, I'm not too sure 
what their hope was in having three slots on there, but personally we feel that it's a little bit unneeded. Now taking a look at the rear I.O. panel on the motherboard, we can see straight away there are plenty of connections. We have a PS2 keyboard connection, two USB 2.0 ports, a VGA or D-sub, DVI port, sadly no HDMI or display port, but we do have a optical SP diff out port, another two USB 2.0 ports, a red eSATA port, gigabit LAN RJ45 port, another two USB 2.0 ports, and straight away we can tell by the blue colour that these are two USB 3.0 ports, and finally over here we have 8 channel audio.